Time for round two of Coffee Talk. We know a lot of people switch jobs quite often these days. So imagine this, you go to an interview for a position that you think you are perfect for. You answer all the questions, you have questions for the boss, you really see yourself not only fitting in, but thriving at this place. However, you don't get the offer. You get the guts to follow up with them and say, is there something else I could have done? Did I miss something? What's the deal? So you ask why. If so, are you fully prepared for their answer? Ponder that because that's exactly what happened to Melissa Weaver, who then talked to Business Insider. Weaver asked for feedback from the tech company where she interviewed and she was told she did not put enough effort, quote, into her appearance. Essentially, the woman did not wear makeup to the interview. According to Weaver, the recruiter even told her that her background was exactly what they were looking for, but they were, quote, concerned that she didn't put in enough effort into how she looked for that interview because she was applying for a very high level vice president position. So Business Insider took this feedback to a slew of human resource experts who say, this actually happens a lot. And it's a very unfair gender and societal expectation put on women. It's sure not fair. I cannot fathom, and I'm not a lawyer, really? never been accused of that. Um, <laughs> Why would you ever put that in writing? Because how can this be legal either? Ah, man, that's pretty brutal. I I'm a little surprised that this tech company was that honest in the response. Is anybody else a little wowed by that? Mm -hmm. And I wonder if she did it by design to, to try to emphasize the fact that she was in interested in substance and not material aesthetics uh, yeah yeah right but i the only thing i will say is that when the company talked about how this was a high level position a very visible position perhaps she would be dealing with clients uh, and you worry about what how she would represent or he if it was a he but i think this is basically about women mm -hmm. uh how they would represent themselves in front of clients yeah. and, and that. If this is sure. how they, if in other words, if this is how they showed up for an important <clears throat> interview to get the job to begin with, how are they gonna act when we, and look when we try to present? So I get that, and is it legal? No, is it is it fair? No. no. And, and, but that's the only um, yeah. pass that I'll give them. For some context, she said she did get her hair done just before it. She had on a very nice suit, and she just wore a little bit of chapstick, which is her go-to look. And I feel like if a guy got his hair cut the day before, wore a nice suit, and maybe put on some chapstick, it'd be fine. Yeah. Fit the bill otherwise. If it's just about the makeup, that's so stupid. That is really <sighs> superficial. All right, well, it should go without saying that you should always dress to impress on a first date, even a second, maybe a third date. And then... After that, wear the sweaty great. workout clothes for eight years. <laughs> Athleisure wear. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what we're talking about with this particular story. <laughs> we want to know when it's okay to cook for a date. We found an article that dug into this discussion in the New York Times. It's specifically focused on the answer of a 29-year-old out of Georgia named Kimberly, what do you think that is? Cortese. Cortese? Okay, yeah. Kimberly Cortese. She said that she used to always cook for the men she was seeing by the second or third date. Whoa. But Kimberly then it's around, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but then she realizes these dudes are expecting her to cook on dates. And they stopped taking her out to eat. Instead, they would say, hey, you gonna cook something? Can we just go over to your place so you can cook something? Ooh, so she, she created- She have wow. cable? She created a rule for herself, no cooking until she is sure that the relationship is serious. Well, Again, the video that we find to support this. Mm -hmm. But why would you invite someone into your home on the second date? Haven't you watched That's... or listened to any serial killer podcast? <laughs> you don't Obviously do she that. Hasn't. Obviously she has not. <laughs> do you know I can still remember the first time my now wife cooked a meal for me? 
And? It was in the basement of the dorm that we both lived in, which was where the washing machines were. And it was my birthday, and she called my mom, very sweet, to say, what's, what's Matt's favorite meal? Because I want to make him a birthday dinner. And I, she brings me down the elevator to like sub-basement two, where there's people changing their loads of laundry, and she set up a little table. And it's got some of my favorites on it. I uh, thought that was, what was really that? sweet. What did she make? It was uh, some pork chops and some broccoli and some mac and cheese. In a dorm? Well, down in the laundry room, there was also an oven. Because nobody, you couldn't have an oven in your room in right. a dorm. Right. So there was a range top and a stove. And she made me. <laughs> now, well that wasn't done. date one, two, or three. We'd been together for a while. Right now. But I also knew where she lived anyway. So. <laughs> Good point. Serial killer. Oh. All right, that brings us to our Facebook question. Oh. What's the best dish? Ooh, what's the best dish that you cook? Bonus points if you post the recipe. Oh, yeah. Head on over to our Facebook page. Share your answers with us. Mine's Pop-Tarts.